You're listening to the Fun Never Ends Podcast with Metalhead Nelson. 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 Hey, welcome to the Fun Never Ends Podcast. I am your Metalhead Nelson, and with me is Brutal Brett. Brutal Brett, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty well, but this is actually a special type of episode, would you say? Very. Today, we have the singer for Navian, Skinner, and the newest singer for the thrash band Forbidden, Norman Skinner. Norman, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. So you're like, yeah, it's a special show. So I'm waiting to hear like, I'm like, ooh, why is it special? (laughs) We're here, man. (laughs) No, I was literally, I thought it was was gonna be like something else, okay. It it can be, we we could turn into a a jam of some sort, somehow. (laughs) We'll figure it out. Oh, hell yeah. So we welcome you back to the show. Last time you were on the show, we got cut off part Did we? way yeah we were talking about wrestling and we got cut off mid zoom oh wow no, that was a long time ago like yeah, that was, was you weren't even married like that was way back that was yeah the last time i saw you you guys were opening for testament at ace of spades yeah that was that yeah. was a bit like 18 or something 2018 i think something like yeah, that that was it because we had we had just came from um uh, tso at the arena can't stroke. Okay. So, uh, how's things been? How how'd you get the divine? You know, I mean, not the. I mean, the forbidden gig. How'd you get the forbidden gig? Oh yeah. Oh, that was a. I don't know, man. It was just it was a, a multiple things happened. You know, um, <clears throat> I'll try to I'll try to abbreviate it as much as possible. So basically, they uh, there, there's a thing that that they that a lot of the core guys do from forbidden called bay area interthrational and what it is is they get a lot of the uh a lot of who's who players and they that they do is they play like early old school thrash songs but here's the here's the caveat if you're in death angel you can't play on a death angel song you have to play somebody else's song so you get all these guys from the different bands and they have to play songs by other people well they were getting ready to go to the dynamo festival over in the netherlands and uh, they didn't have any singers in state. Like the, the, the singers lived out of state or they were on tour. So uh, Chris Contos mentioned, he's like, hey, what about that guy Skinner? You know, he, he's a good singer. See if he'll learn some songs, just help us out with our rehearsals. Um, so they called me, asked me if I could learn 12 songs, come down, help them get ready for this fest. And I'm like, sure. So I did that. Uh, they were appreciative of that and you know they thought i was a, a great vocalist so they invited me to the san francisco version of it which was um three times bigger because they <clears throat> so they had at first they, they were going to give me one or two songs but by the end of it they gave me like eight songs one of the songs they gave me was a forbidden song chalice of blood um that they had me sing with warbringer so it was basically all of warbringer and then i'm the singer um, and that's funny is the singer of Warbringer, he's, he told me, he's like, this is the only guy anyone's ever fronted my band except me, but he did join me to do some back backing vocals, which was cool. Uh, but that was like one of the highlights of the show. <clears throat> and you know, there were jokes, you know, Comptos is backstage and he's like, you guys are fucking stupid. If you don't get forbidden back together, you know, I, I thought nothing of it. Um, you know, because I've heard through the years, you know, no rust, no forbidden. I heard that from Craig. Uh, directly so I was like it ain't happening and then um man I don't know man just months many months later out of the blue I just get a phone call I was not expecting that phone call asking if I would be interested in you know heading up the the reformation of a forbidden coming back and I was like yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah absolutely yeah I'm down so uh but yeah there were a lot of factors I mean I think it was a you know during the Bay Area Interthrational rehearsals, when I was getting them ready, I happened to nail uh, Off the Edge by Forbidden, and that kind of had them go, ooh. And then, you know, they want, I think they wanted to hear me do another Forbidden song, so they gave me the Chalice of Blood one to do live, saw that I pulled it off, um, plus the rehearsals for that. And then um, it was a Alcatraz Festival in Belgium called, asking them if they would, asking Craig if he would put together 
the band again to do a 35th anniversary of Forbidden Evil. Uh, and they even mentioned him. They're like, hey, we know Russ is retired. He doesn't sing anymore. Could you get another singer? And uh, so there you go, man. Everything just sort of aligned, and I happened to be the right guy and the right place at the right time. So it's pretty badass, man. And congratulations <laughs> on the gig. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's been fun so far. <laughs> uh, I do have a question. Uh, first, I want to say Warbringer, great band. I grew up, yeah. uh, I went to high school with them, actually. They're Newbury Park, Thousand Oaks area. Oh, nice. So, yeah, those are awesome. Um, but I just wanted to say, uh, how do you feel in comparison to the reaction that Forbidden is getting since, you know, the Reformation in regards to how I, Nuclear Assault and all those bands, I believe Nuclear Assault had a album or are going to have an album that is coming out on Century Media, if I'm not mistaken. Um, just the, I guess, revival of many of those thrash bands and the continued legacy are you noticing younger fans being more into it or more of the legacy and diehard fans having a, a good reception to it, I should say? Well, I'd say, uh, I mean, from what I've seen, uh, so far the, the reactions have been super positive, way more positive than I was anticipating, like 99.999% positive. All, the only bad thing I've heard is like one or two guys that are like, no rust, no forbidden, you know? Um, and those are, those are the type yeah. of people that don't like change, but literally everyone else, you know, we've had skeptics that are like, Hey man, I was really skeptical, but when I heard it, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer. So, you know, we've been winning them over and those, those ones that are the skeptics are the legacy diehards, yeah. right? They have it ingrained what it should sound like, etc. And um, so far, you know, I think when they first saw, some of the live videos come out then they were like oh, okay that they're not messing with what i like they're not messing with the past you know it, it's it's a it's a new chapter forward but it still feels right um but at the same time i think for thrash thrash has always kind of had that wave after wave of new fans right thrash fans ultimately go back to those original bands and they find all that old school stuff so i'm seeing a lot of the diehard fans, and I'm also seeing tons of new fans. And I think those new fans were already into Forbidden before mm -hmm. this ever happened. So hopefully that answers what you're asking. Okay, so Mike, very much so. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk about your preparation when it came down to Alcatraz Festival, going over there and everything you had to go through. And did you get to meet any of your idols while you were there? Because you were the same night as Macaulay Shanker, or no, Michael Shanker, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was a ton of rehearsals. I mean, we were rehearsing like three times a week. And for me, I come the furthest because they're all in like uh, Oakland and I'm up in, you know, near Sacramento. So it'll take me a good two hours to get there in each way. So um, I definitely put in the time and energy. Uh, make sure I was out there at, at the rehearsals. We were just hammering the songs, making sure we had the album down. Plus, we picked two songs off of Twisted and Form. So, you know, we were doing a total of, I think, was that like 10 songs. So we really, we really just hammered it. Hammered, hammered, hammered on these songs, making sure we got them as close to perfect as we could. Um, and uh, other than that, you know, our management set up all, you know, they worked out where we were staying, the flights, all that stuff. Um, that was all handled between the festival and our management. So really, for me, it was just, you know, getting my gear ready, making sure I had the songs down, and then just going over there and, and doing it. And it was definitely an experience because, I mean, prior to that festival, you know, I think it was, it was like 25,000 people at least, something like that. You know, I played like to 1,800 um, roughly, or I think, something like that. So this was, you know, far and beyond anything I've done. Um, but it was cool, man. It was a great experience. Um, I definitely got a you know, a couple guys I got to meet that I was like, oh, well, you know, I, I got to meet like a uh, first singer was I got to meet Jesse Leach from Killswitch Engage. And I was like, yes. I'm a huge Killswitch fan. Um, yeah. He was very, very courteous. He was a nice guy. You know, soft spoken, very almost introverted, but really nice. And we took a picture. Um, and I got to meet Ripper Owens, Tim Ripper Owens, who, yeah. um, holy crap. And uh, he actually, he actually knew who I was and he had already been following the story because I guess he's he's a he he's listened to Forbidden. He was already a Forbidden fan. So he'd seen, oh, they got a new singer and this, this and that, you know. Um, and my story 
was similar to his, you know, a guy just kind of plucked from this local level and put into this big band. His, of course, was on a way huger scale, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> from a tribute band plucked into like Judas Priest. But um, so I wanted to ask him questions. I wanted to talk to him about him, but he was just so cool. He was like just talking about me. And, and I was just like, you know, I, I was just lost in it, man. So I definitely looking forward to hanging out with that guy again because I have my own fanboy questions that I want to ask. Um, but those were two, like, you know, as a singer, two main guys that I got to meet that I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. And the guys give me crap, you know, in, in a nice way. They're like, get used to it, man. You're going to meet all sorts of people. <laughs> so that's the beauty part of being in that industry, too. Yeah, I try to I try to keep my cool, man. I try to be like, all right, these are my peers, right? These are, but but at the same time, I'm just like, ooh, he's right there, you know. <laughs> what was it like that... having pyro for the first time? Oh, the pyro! <laughs> yeah, that was. Remember your post saying, ooh, pyro. Yeah, so uh, it was a, uh, yeah, I think it was the day before we were uh, doing our production meeting. So we went out to the uh, the, the fairgrounds. And uh, we met to get make sure our videos were working and intros and stuff like that. And um, I think it was Chris that saw the pyro truck and he's like, let's go see how much pyro is. Let's go see if we can get pyro. And this is the day before the show. And they go and they talk. And I think our label, uh, I think Nuclear Blast covered the cost for it too, which was cool because they were out there. And uh, yeah, I remember they're like, oh, this is your, see this tape there? Don't go past that. These pods will go off. Uh, they kind of told me which songs, but I didn't get it all down. I was just like, hey, just don't go past the tape. <laughs> and I remember Chris going, when that, py when that pyro goes off, don't react to it. You know, just whatever. So I remember singing, and it was the very first song. And it's just a whoosh, and I'm like, ooh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you can feel the the heat from, from those things, man. Oh, yeah. But uh, what's funny is when you're – at least for me, when I'm into it and I'm just doing my thing, I'm running my lines, I'm looking at the crowd, I'm going through the motions. It's almost a secondary thing. I almost start to not, it's just part of the stage. So it's interesting how that worked. Uh, I actually have a question. Since you're talking about the dichotomy of going from like the quote unquote local scene to being plucked to Judas Priest level for that, um, what do you think? Well, the not, different not, not, yeah. But. Yeah. Well, I was about to ask the difference between playing for Nevaeh and then playing for Forbidden, and then also uh, what bands locally in the uh, Bay Area scene now do you see that I think deserve a little shout out from you, and ones that you wish to play with in the future of the you know bigger scale, as well as. Uh, I guess now your contemporaries, I would say, that you haven't gone to play with yet. Yeah, there's a there's a few questions in there. Let me let me try to <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Tackle, let me try to let me try to tackle each one. So uh, obviously the the difference between um, the level I was at to the level I'm now is um you know with Navian and even Navian, you know we're a worldwide band. I mean you know we have albums out and everything, and it's all great, but at that level, you're still hustling, you know, you're still trying to make contacts and trying to make things happen. And you're, you're in the trenches. Sure. At home, you know, everyone wants you to headline and they're offering you stuff, but outside of that little pond, you know, you're still scratching just to get your name known. And, um, it's just, it's, it's way tough, right? It's way tough because nothing's really just handed to you and you really got to battle for every little ounce of anything. I've noticed with Forbidden, it's like, oh, hey, man, we got all these offers coming in. There's this festival, this show, and everyone wants to hear the new Forbidden, you know, and hey, you know, if they want us to write a record, and everything just kind of seems to be, they've already done all of that, you know, that, that, that local level, paid their dues, you know, battled it in the trenches. So it's just, you know, show up and sing, do your homework, you know, I don't have to worry about all of the other stuff that I do with, with Nabayan, because I'm still doing Nabayan, and so I'm still having to those struggles. But I am hoping that, you know, with me fronting Forbidden now, it will help maybe grease some wheels with Nabayan and maybe get us a little more exposure. So th that's the, the main difference is really the business side and exposure and just people listening and knowing, you know, and the battles. Um, 
aside from that, bands around here that, I mean, shit, I could give a ton of shout outs. Uh, one of my favorites is a band that's been around for a long time called Potential Threat SF. Um, great thrash band. They've been around forever. I just don't think that they, you know, they've done tours. They put albums on. I just don't think that they've ever gotten the due that they deserve. I mean, I, I, I love their music. Um, there's some cool up and comers. There's a band called Frolic. That's, that's really good. Um, Hatriots from here. I mean, Zetra used to front them and they, they've been doing good things, but, um, you know, I, I think that they could be, uh, put on a, even a bigger, bigger scale because they're, they're really good. Um, on a different kind of uh, non thrash, um, my divine keyboardist, uh, band grave shadow, uh, for symphonic, like power metal, those guys, oh. guys and gals are really good. Um, I, th I think they could really go on to some some big things as well. But there's a ton of ba bands. There's, an, uh, there's a band in Sacramento that a lot of people don't know about that's a really good thrash band called Solanum or Solanum. S O L A N U M. <laughs> I'm just going to spell it out. They kind of they kind of sound like creator to me. Really good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a ton of bands, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of bands. I mean, I got buddies and bands that are fantastic. It's a band called Short Fuse. Check them out. They're really good, but there's a bunch. Sorry to all my friends. If I missed your band, I'm not going to name everybody. So. I got a question. More. <laughs> so how do you find balance between work life and home life without, uh, with so many bands and avoid the burnout, man? Well, avoiding the burnout is tough. I mean, I, I won't lie. There's days where I just I sit here and I'm like, man, my, my plate's too full. I, I don't want to do all of this, you know, um, and that's being honest. You know, it is what it is. It's not complaining. I'm not complaining because I get to do this. It's just we're human, right? We can only do so much and we get burnt out. So, um, but of course, I always try to make time for the family, right? I got two kids, the wife. Um, so I always try to make sure that they're included in things and, you know, they're loved and everything. Um, luckily for me, I, I've been a remote employee for my job for ever. So, like, this is right here in front of me. This is my work, my play, writing, recording, everything. The whole nine yards. Here's my work computer and stuff right here. <laughs> so literally, so I'm caught up on emails and all my stuff. I just turn this way and I can work. So, it, you know, that alone, that alone helps tremendously. Plus, um, being a remote employee, if I tour anywhere in the Americas, you know, Canada down to South America, I really don't have to take any PTO off because I can work from the bus. I can work from a hotel room. It's, you know, so I can save that for overseas stuff. Yeah. So, you know, so far it works out, but the, the, the remote thing really helps with the balance. Um, and then the rest between bands is just scheduling. Like in Navayan, we have a biweekly rehearsal every other Thursday. Um, Forbidden is way more demanding. It's like two days a week, mm -hmm. but I just make sure that that every other Thursday I'm, with Nevian, so I get that in as well. So, speaking of Nevian, last time I saw you guys, you guys were a different lineup. You had a different, you had a different drummer, different bass player. Now you guys have a keyboardist, totally different bass player and drummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a. Oh man, there's a lot to that. Um, well, the drummer, he he, uh, during COVID, he lost his job. And it was a money thing, and he was coming the furthest. He was from San Jose, so he was driving, you know, sometimes you know, two, three hours to get to rehearsal, wow. and it, it just got really tough. Plus, he also had, he was also doing, um, he, you know, he's in the Hispanic community, so he does a lot of uh, mariachi with his brothers and stuff. And they they get paid to do all these weddings and other things, so he's making money at that. So it was almost a no brainer. I think he was just like doing this is just way too much, um, and and you know he basically he made the choice to separate. Yeah. I think it was amicable between him and most of the band, not me. I didn't want to see him go at all, but yeah. he, you know, I can't make up other people's minds. For yeah, damn good. Um, and, but luckily, luckily enough, we got Isaiah AR in the band very shortly after the dude's such a technician, um, just fantastic, a great positive energy, everything. Um, <clears throat> so we're really happy to have him, uh, regarding bass. Uh, so Rick was an original member, and it was just honestly, it's just one of those things where the two grew apart. And then our new album that we just finished, he really didn't like most of the songs on it, didn't think it's the right direction. Um, and I think uh, when he did leave, he was talking about starting a black metal band, a symphonic black metal band, which is different. So, so you know, it just, I think it was a long time coming, honestly. 
Um, I, I think he was already sort of getting disgruntled with the way things were going. We were getting disgruntled with him. So it was another one where, where we informed him that we were going to have to let him go. He was like, thank God, I was getting ready to quit. <laughs> so, you know, uh, yeah, so then we held uh, we held auditions um, for a bassist, and uh, we got hit up by this guy, Tyler Satterley, who's our new bass player. But thing is, he plays in a thrash band. He's the lead singer and lead guitar player. Wow. Don't play bass in that band. <laughs> so when he when he when he sent us a thing saying it was interesting, we were all like, "Dude, we don't want a guitar player that plays bass. We want like an actual bass player." But he sent us, you know, uh, audition tape him just fully ripping with the fingers Iron Maiden songs, and we're like, "Whoa, this guy's like a bass player!" And I guess he, his whole life he's been playing bass too. Oh man! So yeah, and he's just super super high energy and really good. Um, and then the keyboard thing. So we, uh, Aaron, he actually, we have keys on all albums and Aaron is the one who composed and recorded them on Drew King as well as Ruthless Divine. Wow. So during, you know, we were just like, I think we were playing with Delane and Amorphous and we, it was at that show. We were talking about keyboards and we're like, dude, we should just have him be a full-time member and bring that more live aspect blah, blah, blah. So we call, I called him from that show. And asked if he was interested, and he told us the very next day, yeah. He, so, and he's been a full time member ever since. So, it's pretty bad. So, there you go. That that explains the Navian line at three line of changes right there. The Druid King, the Ruthless Divine, get those albums, check them out. I highly recommend it. <laughs> yep. And the third one is, uh, is already in the can, ready to be released as soon as we get a label. Our label just informed us. They're not picking up our option because they are closing shop. Ooh. So we're Ooh. like, oh, crap, we don't have a label. So we have to do some shopping right now for our third album. Best of luck. And I hope <laughs> you just find something. I know you guys will. Yeah. Uh, I'm oh, excited. Yeah, I mean, like, for, this is one of those things I was talking about. If it were forbidden, there'd be plenty of label offers. <laughs> Vian, we got to hustle. We got to try to find one. It's uh, the difference again, right? Yeah, definitely, man. I do have a question uh, coming from the more family perspective. Uh, Nelson said that you have kids that are in the middle school and I believe high school, he said, um, and that they're into metal as well. I'm wondering if they've actually turned you on to any bands just uh, from what they've seen on the internet the, or anything like that and how it's affected your own personal music taste or how you go approaching, uh, I guess, social media and the internet in both bands yeah so they i i do have two kids both in high school a freshman and a senior uh, my daughter who's uh, 17 she plays a she plays a little guitar when she feels like it uh, <laughs> but her her musical taste is all over the rock uh, metal spectrum i mean she listens to everything from like she loves like typo negative and alice in chains but then she also likes you know uh suicidal tendencies and death so i don't really i never know what she's listening in one minute it's pink floyd you know the next it's obituary so I, you know she she's very eclectic in what she listens to um she has not turned me on to anything i didn't already know about um yet um my son he <laughs> so he is a, a drummer um mm -hmm. he's been taking lessons and just excelling very quickly but he listens to bands I'm unfamiliar with, uh, a lot heavier stuff. He did turn me on to a, a Parkway Drive. Oh yeah, you know, Slaughter, Slaughter to Prevail. Um, More metalcore, so, it seems. Yeah, so he loves the speed and the aggression. But then at the same time, you know, I'll hear him listening to like you know uh, Megadeth and you know Maiden and stuff like that. So he's got the NDO. So he's kind of got that. The, the 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 wide range of the classics, but then I can mm -hmm. tell he really likes that really quick, fast, heavy stuff. Um, so yeah, so some of those bands he's turned me on to. I have it hasn't changed my musical taste because I haven't been like ooh. I just been <laughs> like oh this is cool. Um, but they definitely you know my power metal stuff comes on and they're like can you skip this please? <laughs> um, but the, yeah, they love they love coming to the shows. They like seeing the band. They're they're fans. Uh, they love Forbidden. So uh, they're big fans of that. Um, as well so um but yeah it's it's cool it's cool that they uh they support me and they, they really you know they're, they they say they get more metal street cred because of who their dad is now. <laughs> so i don't know man <clears throat> from 
the three of us, uh, we like to talk wrestling as well. So Brett's a wrestling guy. You're a wrestling guy. Yeah, I haven't seen wrestling in a long time, but I, I <laughs> yeah, I can definitely talk wrestling. It's been a while. You're, who is your yeah, favorite wrestler? All time? All time. All time. That would be the man with the excellence of execution. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be, Brett the Hitman Hart. <laughs> he is my all-time favorite. He's a technician. I always loved his in-ring persona. I love the way his matches, everything from his backbreaker to his off the second rope, you know, elbow, all, all the stuff to a sharpshooter. Um, I just really liked the moves he did. He didn't have to be too over the top. He wasn't a high flyer, but he could take you to the mat and he could do some damage. Um, for newer, oh God, what's funny is I think newer wrestlers, yeah. but like even the newer guys that I like are not new. Like um, uh, Randy Orton, dude, he's got the best finisher. You can hit that finisher from anywhere, anytime, man. And you know, out of nowhere. Boom. Yeah, out of anywhere. Uh, I think he has the, the best finisher that I've, in my opinion, period. Um, I like that dude. Is it Finn? Finn, uh... Finn Balor? Finn Baylor, yeah. Finn Baylor, that dude's really cool. I only saw a little bit of him before. My, see, my daughter was watching again, so I got back into it. But she doesn't watch anymore, so now it's like, you know, I watched for a little while, and then now I don't really have the time so yeah. but we still do watch i still watch the royal rumble every year because that's the best thing ever i just <laughs> love the concept so every year even if we don't know who the wrestlers are we'll, we'll, we'll watch the royal rumble so i will say uh wrestling has more of a metal and hardcore connection than ever before lately with uh two members of uh hardcore bands in being uh andy williams the butcher and Brody King, who's in House Black for AEW, um, Andy Williams was in Every Time I Die, a metalcore band, and Brody King oh. is the singer of the band God's Hate. So in doing so, they've had so many themes be metal and hardcore songs. So maybe Nevian or Forbidden could be uh, an entrance theme one day. <laughs> we did have one guy, uh, we were playing in uh, Reno, and... Uh... This was before the Ruthless Divine was out, but we played like Lions live. And he asked if we could, when we recorded it, if he could use it as an entrance music for his wrestling. But uh, we never heard from him because we didn't keep in touch with him or know who he was. Yeah. Um, oh, but big shout out to my buddy, uh, uh, Boss Blacker. He is a singer, drummer in the metal scene here, and he is a wrestler. Oh. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, just a shout out to him. I, I see him. He's posting all the time. We're... They're putting on their little shows, working, you know, working on the crowds. And I see him in his training sessions and stuff. And it's really cool to see somebody, whatever the dream is or whatever field it is, to see them passionately go after it. I, I appreciate that. And stuff. How do you feel about all the upcoming festivals that you have lined up for next year with Forbidden? <laughs> There's a lot of them. I mean, I'm excited about it. Um, so far, things that have been announced in the U.S., we got a, we got Seattle, Houston, and Baltimore. Um, we've got Chile and Brazil. Um, we got uh, the UK, the Netherlands. We got uh, Belgium again, I think. No, it's just the Netherlands. But, you know, and then I think there's a couple more coming out that, uh, that are going to be announced as well. So, you know, it's just like, oh, this is going to be fun. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot of travel, get those passport stamps. Um, but, you know, it's it's really all new to me, man. I mean, I have to have one festival, you know, that's yeah. it. So I, was, I told the guys, like, oh, I could get used to this. And they go, hey, you better. We're going to do a lot of these next year. So, <laughs> um, but it'll be interesting. I got to I gotta really, um, at this stage, it's a gray area, right? I'm not going to be making nowhere near enough money to quit my job. So um, I just need to watch and, and plan accordingly. So, you know, I use my PTO right. What ones, you know, do I fly in? Do I fly home? Do I stay for a little long? So that's that's the, that's the my worry right now. Yeah. It's just working that out. I want to make sure I'm there 100% for the for the guys. But at the same time, I can't sacrifice my own livelihood. So Understandable. Um, yeah. So what's next for Navayan and your other projects, like Skinner and stuff like that? So, so yeah, I mean... So any other project I had besides Nevian, Skinner, and Forbidden are dead. 
<laughs> but I've said that many times. I've said that many times and things have popped up. So never say never. But as of right now, anything else that I was involved with, um, any of those other bands, it's on a permanent hiatus until, you know, something, I don't know, pops up. But uh, for Navayan, like I said, album three is done. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, God, we're ready to release this thing. We're ready to go the whole next steps of everything but the, you know now we need a label so now we're on the label hunt uh, hopefully that won't delay things too much longer um i just started working on the first song for album four oh. so you know i want to keep the writing moving forward um other than that you know we have a couple local shows in the works like normal i mean we're a local band technically so we, we do the local shows but um we're just really you know our, our here's a really positive is a uh, the manager of Forbidden recently took on the Vine as well. Oh. So he's going to try to get us, um, you know, he's going to try to pitch us a little bit. There's no guarantees. Oh, yeah. um, the idea is maybe that, you know, if Forbidden's playing a festival on a Saturday, maybe they might be interested in a Vine to open or be low on a Friday, you know, since I'll be there already. And if it works out, of course, we won't have everything covered payment wise, but if it offsets enough where it makes sense, you know, and we're hoping that he can help us with a label contacts and stuff so it's um it's all new it's all new but for Navine it, it's business as usual writing local shows and just just trying to get this new album out and see what opportunities arise see, this um, is and then Skinner Skinner's sorry I don't mean what's up I don't mean to cut you off I want to tell everybody this is how much mm -hmm. I love Navine through a mutual friend of ours that I got into Navine I actually flew up from from LA up to Sacramento to see you guys play at the Holy Diver for the first time. A couple times. Well, a couple times, yeah. You've come up. The, twice, I think. And then the third time was the the Ace of Spades. Right. So, so we, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, anyone that doesn't know Navian, it's N I V I A N E. Check us out. It's, and I hate, I hate, I almost hate saying power metal because people automatically think, Oh, it's like, you know, Rhapsody or Hammerfall or Blind, you know, Guardian. I'm like, no, we're very heavy power metal. We're like more like a mystic prophecy or brainstorm or, uh, you know, like God, even primal it. fear or the more balls to it. Um, I, I would say I hear, oh, I was sorry about that. I hear a bit of a uh, King Diamond Merciful Fate in it uh, just through your <laughs> vocal performance. And uh, that's one of my biggest influences or just like in metal. So Oh, nice. Keep doing what you're doing on that. That, that oh, coming, Arlo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just because dude, from from uh, from me not being so much into power metal, like I listen to Manowar and things like that, but it, it's still new to me. I'm learning more from Nelson. So having that as my like uh, point of reference, I'm like, that. that's where I'm coming from with Nevian. All right. You, Nelson will have to turn you on to one of my other studio projects called Hellscreen. Uh, we did two albums. It's basically the band Cage. Um, also, the same band as Three Tremors, but I'm the singer um, instead of Sean Peck. But uh, one one a journalist said it sounded like uh, King Diamond on steroids. So uh, you might like yes. it. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so for Skinner, uh, Skinner's just been my recording stuff, right? Um, I literally have four six-song EPs in the works that are 90% written. Um, and demoed. So I just have a couple songs that are in the works that I need to get done. And um, I should be recording a new, the first of the four uh, Skinner six song EPs shortly. Um, so that'll always just be something on the back burner that I'll always be working on my, my own Skinner stuff. Um, and then these next four EPs are all one big concept. So it start, it's a whole story. Um, a lot of guest musicians, a lot of guest singers. Um, something I've been working on for many years, just in the on the behind the scenes. So I, but I had to finish up my solo album that came out uh, March 30th, The Dark Design, and I wanted to get that done and out before I really went full force with these other EPs. So, if you, what song do you wish you could have written? Any song? Oh, by someone else? Yeah. If there's one song. What's the song um, you wish you could have written? You know, I can... or five. Vocally, you know, I, I have to say I can name a couple actually. Uh, one one inspired Judas Priest. That 
is just a phenom- and that's a ripper song that's off of and, and, and it's off jugulator and the vocal performance on that is just spectacular another one i'm going to go way back to my high school years for me uh, borderlines on hair metal but i'd say quicksand jesus by skid row is just an insanely awesome song and the vocals on that that one i would also put as a perfect vocal performance as well that song is insane um so those are a couple yeah for sure that i'm that i was like i mean they're newer songs that i like i like, I like the band pretty maids and they have a song called kingmaker so which is their the title track and that song just rocks I'm like oh this is just out. one of those songs that gets you you just kind of get going yeah oh yeah it's called it's pretty it's pretty maids kingmaker and if you haven't heard them listen to that album um motherland pandemonium any of those so they were a band that they were like a hair band in the late 80s really good stuff mind you but then they came back years later and it's it's they just sound like a really modern heavy metal band that just got way better over time and i actually got to see them at prog power in atlanta one year and then they were just fantastic but they're up there they're up there for me they're just a killer band but uh that song kingmaker man it's just got a hook to it so I have to check that out on my drive. Yeah, and then going to bands that like, that you mentioned, you're like you, you asked me what bands could I play want to play with that mm-hmm. I haven't got to play with. Um, I would say my favorite band of all time is Evergrey. Um, so they're a band I absolutely would love to share the stage with. Um, and you know, let's go. Let's let's just name the big ones, right? Maiden, Priest, Metallica. Come on, I mean, any of those big ones as well. But uh, Evergrey gets. They have a special place because they're like my fave. So, my next question was going to be because uh, Nelson mentioned songs that you wish you were in. What uh, label, roster, or era do you think that would be the perfect representation for any of your bands now? Whether it being, you know, like the glory days of Metal Blade, of uh, I know you work with Nuclear Blast, with Forbidden, anything like that. Oh, dude, I, I would go I would go to the mid eighties and just jump on Geffen Records, man. That's I mean, <laughs> that's a big time, right? There's Sony Columbia, one of the big one of the bigs. I wouldn't even mess with a metal label. I would go straight to the <laughs> mainstream label and be like, Where's my money? Where's my bag of coins? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything's so, cyclical. Uh, yeah, I mean, but for now, I mean I think I like for Navian if we could get on a label like AFM, I think that'd be a perfect fit for us. Um, Nuclear Blast is, is honestly a great fit for Forbidden, so it's cool that we're on with them still. Um, I know that they have one album left that they owed the label, and it's very cool that you know the, the label representative was out at the festival and they heard us, and they're they're very interested in what the next album is going to be. So that's that's positive, you know. Do you have any crazy or fun stories that happened at Alcatraz or during that time? Uh, not God, when you get to our age, you're really tame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, it, it, you know, I know that. So we I don't know if you guys happen to see we did a, a secret show. Uh, our very first time live was a secret show near San Francisco um, in the Bay Area. Uh, and we performed under uh, Twisted into Evil. Um, and we did a whole promo. Now, if you haven't seen this promo, let me know, and I'm going to find it for you. But it's Macho Man. And we have our buddy, yeah. who's this cool Macho Man thing. He busts out of a garbage can. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's doing the whole thing where he's just out of his mind and announcing this show. Um, so, you know, and at our secret show, he was there with a whole bunch of Slim Jims passing him out. And, uh, <laughs> yes. It, it was really cool. So he's kind of become... So forbidden, he's kind of become Forbidden's mascot, you know. You know, Megadeth has Vic and Iron Maiden has Eddie. We have Macho Man, <laughs> and uh, he. Uh, so we he was going to be doing drum teching in in Belgium, and uh, he was also he also came on stage just to do a little harmony part real quick on one of the songs, um, but he was going to do it all in Macho Man gear. But Chris forgot it at the hotel, oh. so we were already there, so he couldn't do it. But uh, so. That, I mean, that's kind of funny, but everybody will see here and there Macho Man's going to pop up yes. <laughs> at Forbidden stuff. But um, so I'm assuming you guys have not seen that promo. I think no, I saw like a bit and bits and pieces of it. I didn't 
touch on it whole. I'll I'll, uh, I'll have to find it. I'll make, I'll make sure that uh, that I send it your way so you can check it out. It's hilarious. I'm gonna laugh my ass off. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good, especially being wrestling fans. You're gonna pick up on all the little saying oh, he says, like yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah. like, like he does the full like he does a full cutaway. Like it's great. Oh, man. you know what? that brings me an interesting question. How is the pit? How is the mosh pit? And are, are you someone who instigates the you know moshing and circle pits? Not really. I mean, that's like I. All right, here, here's some little insight. I hate being in an audience when the singer is basically degrading us. Uh, I'm allowed to swear, yep. right? Yep. Okay, I hate it when he's like, "Come on, motherfuckers! Yeah, you fucking this, blah blah blah." Yeah, I hate that. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I know you're doing your thing, but it, I'm like, come on, dude. That's you don't have to do that. Just deliver your shit, right? Yeah. And then I also don't like it when they're almost like begging us to come on, move, do it for me. Mom. It's like, dude, if the music's there and the energy's there, they're gonna do it. You can do this. <laughs> I, I do that. I'll be I'll, if we're going. I'll just be like that. But you're not gonna see me up there like begging for a pit. I, I'm, I don't try to egg it on and stuff. And with Forbidden, luckily, that stuff just happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, first song, you know, I, I see it. It was a kind of kitty corner on the right side is where it opened up. And a whole show, whole show was never stopped. Uh, but here's something funny relating to Pitts. When we did our secret show, we had a big uh, black banner up so we, we couldn't see what was going on. And the intro started. It was the very beginning of Follow Me, but it was just like the CD intro that we would kick into i didn't see until later um when i saw you know video of it as soon as that first note hit we weren't even playing and that was a whole minute and a half of that they started pitting they were pitting to the intro before we even hit a note so uh yeah <laughs> gotta love that oh yeah <laughs> i think brett you had a question regarding crossover uh, I, I, it was about crossover and just the what your definition of it is and whether you have much experience as well trying to win over, you know, those who are more into hardcore, those who are more into punk when playing thrash, when playing power metal as well, and how you try to incorporate uh, fan bases from all across those different, I guess, metal to some degree genres and death metal as well. Yeah, well, I mean, for Forbidden, it's, they don't, you know, we don't worry about any of that because it's just like, yeah. we're, we're Forbidden. It is what it is. It's thrash. Yep. And we play it. But, but for instance, uh, you know, for Navayan, when we play with heavier bands, we probably try to put our heavier songs in the set, right? Um, if we're playing with, one time we opened up for Warrant. So we're like, dude, let's put some more ballad, ballads in, in the set, you know? Yeah. And because um, you want to, right? You want to win over those those other fans. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you want to be true to your own band. So you don't want to put it all one direction so they think, oh, this is only what they sound like and be like, huh. Yeah. But um, for instance, uh, Navaya and our last tour was uh, in 2021. Uh, we went out with Soulfly. So we we're on tour with Soulfly. So very different bands, very different sounds. And, you know, we would talk to the, the merch booth. We would talk to the fans afterwards. And it was almost always the same. They would be like, yeah, man, you know, we'd see you guys come out and you got a guitar player. And we're like, what the hell is this shit? You know, blah, blah, blah. And then we would play and they'd be like, all right, all right. You know, it's cool. You know, and they'd get all into it and stuff. So, um, you know, we, we try to tailor our set a little bit towards whatever the other band crowd is. But at the same time, we're just going to be true to ourselves. Not everyone's going to like you. Uh, do the best you can. I mean, Forbidden uh, in May, we're playing Maryland Metal Death Fest. <laughs> I can't read ninety percent of the logos on that thing, no. and I, I think other than maybe one other band, we're the only ones with like any kind of clean vocals. So, you know, that, that's going to be interesting. You excited? For that? <laughs> that's going to be interesting. So, yeah, maybe a heavy set. <laughs> Speaking of fest, what was it like playing uh, Power Prog? Because I saw the lineup this year. It's like wingers on there, and then like a couple other bands so i've i've personally never played prog power um but i've been there i used to go every year it was like my go-to festival and then i got busy and i was always doing tours and stuff and then you know aftershock is here and my kids are old enough where they want to go so 
you know, all my money that I would spend for that one festival. Now I take the whole family to this other one. So I haven't been going in a long time, but um, that fest, you know, was more, fa- I kept going back for the friends and family. Yeah. Sometimes the lineup was killer. Other times I was like, eh. And, you know, like I saw this year, it's like, I don't know who half the bands are. Uh, I'm like, I've seen Winger a million times. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm not going to fly all the way across country to hear them do pole in its entirety. We, I Don't get me wrong. I think that's a fantastic album, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. I heard that, uh, they're only doing that festival for a couple more years. Um, then they're shutting it down, retiring. So you got anything else, Britt? Uh, I, I have a lot more, but, uh, I, it says up top, uh, that this call has a deadline. Unfortunately, I could go on for two like minutes. minutes. It's giving me 15 more minutes on this call. I'm like, you, you can do a 10 minute quick fire if you want. <laughs> Well, huh? I'm trying to think. Uh, are there any local? There is one local-ish crossover hardcore band from the area that I know of, and I want to see if you know of them or just bands of that ilk. Uh, they're from San Jose. They're called Drain. They're kind of a Slayer style, but with more of a hardcore approach. No, don't know of them. Uh, the only band Drain I know is like Drain Sth, and there's an all-girl band from a. Uh... Europe. I don't think they're around anymore. They're kind of a heavy Alice in Chains, but all girls. Really good. That's. A nice I'm one. gonna check them out. Yeah, it's, as called, well. it's called Drain, Drain, and then S T H, and they had a I think they only had two albums out. So. Okay, if I'm you gonna play check that. Any venue, if you like any venue that you haven't played, what's the dream venue that you would want to play or venues? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Some of these, some. Uh, Maybe Madison Square Garden or something, something very historical. Yeah, you know, Giant Stadium, one of those big, big, big things would be pretty cool. So, and I do have a question: Are those kaiju or uh, like uh, Japanese vinyl toys behind you? They are not. So that, my friend, is 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 one of my cases of vintage eighties He Man Masters of the Universe toys because I collect that vintage. That's bad, that is memory. even cooler. Yeah, yeah. So that is a, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, some of them. I but had yeah. to ask because I couldn't see, but no, that is, I, I used to collect kaiju and Japanese vinyl toys. So I'm just like, is he a collector too? But no, that blows out of your way even. <laughs> yeah, I got, I think on the floor, you can see some of the castles down there. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I got a, I got another case just like this over here, and I have tons of the He-Man. Of about ninety-five percent of all the He-Man Funkos, all sizes, also. So yeah, but yeah. I'm a, if you can't tell, I'm a I'm a big uh, Masters of the Universe. That is so badass. So God bad. damn. <laughs> I remember watching that's my, Man when I was a kid. That, yeah, that's my that's my inner nerd right there. <laughs> I remember that, I the video that. store trying to rent them, and then. You couldn't rent them anymore. I was like, damn it. <laughs> uh, there's an internet meme of someone recreated like He-Man, but it's him seeing Gypsy by Merciful Fate. Oh, I think I think somebody <laughs> sent that to me. I get, yeah, everybody sends me. I Daily, I get the He-Man, Skeletor memes, videos. Um, and I'm like, it's cool. But I'm like, I want people to send me free toys. That's what I want. And, oh, there's a guy who, who uh, hit me up and he's like, Hey, when you come to Brazil, I got some, uh, some He-Man stuff for you. Oh, God. there we go. Yeah. I was about there to say, go. uh, nuclear blast has done the Slayer action figures with a uh, super seven. Maybe you'll get one with forbidden. Dude, I, I can't even imagine someone <laughs> making a freaking toy of me. That would, my mind would be blown. My mind would be like, <laughs> wow, really me? So, I mean, it, the way that people talk, you know, they're like, oh, you know, they talk to me like, you know, even friends, I go out to a show and they're all, hey, rock stars here, hey, rock star and all that. And I'm like, I go, there ain't nothing different, man. I'm the same dude that I was a few months ago. I, no change, dude. Like, so like, I know they're all joking and they mean it playful, but it's like, I don't ever want, I've, I've personally met too many cock stars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The guys that I like was like, oh, wow, it's going to meet them. They turn out to be complete assholes. And, I never want to be that guy. I always remember where I come from. So. I've met too many like that. And, uh, mm-hmm. 
then the, you make them the ones that are like really humble and down to earth and they're like to the T. Yeah, those are the cool ones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up. Anything you like to to add, Brutal Brett? Uh, no, I've been enjoying this far too much. I've been just enjoying listening and learning more. And I just need to listen to all the bands that you shouted out and as well as your other projects as well. Uh, I have, a, I have a lot of stuff. So if you, so, um, so I'll go ahead and plug myself real quick. If that's cool. So for all, for all your, your uh, people watching and listening out there, um, if you're curious about any of my past projects or current projects, um, I have my own website normanskinner.net um one guy has the calm but he's like wants me to pay like thousands of dollars so he can kiss my ass um so it's normanskinner.net um i have videos on there of every video i've ever released there's no forbidden stuff really on there yet because that's new um i have a playlist on there and is every studio song i've ever released that's and badass. Like 175 songs or something on it uh, so you can literally go and be like let me hear what he has done and it's everything. Uh, there's also uh, for Spotify users, if you type in Norman Skinner Ultimate, there's another another like ultimate playlist, but it's only got like maybe 150, 145 songs, but um, from my like 17 albums I've released. But you can definitely dive in and if you're wanting to do a deep dive and see how long it takes before you get tired of hearing my voice, go for it, man. <laughs> but yeah, one stop shop, check it out. Plus I have lots of merch and stuff. Um, I ain't making the big money yet, so please buy something. If anything, buy my old stuff so I can get it out of my closet so I can make room for more email. I was going to say the shirt <laughs> that you're wearing now even has a sick design. Yeah, this one we don't make anymore. This is uh, one of our discontinued Nevian shirts. Yeah, I have maybe, we'll bring, maybe we'll bring it back one day. I've got the Drew King one and then one that I think it was like a dragon one. Oh, that, so the, the dragon one is the blue? Yeah. That's that's discontinued. We have I literally have one left sitting over here and i think it's a small um but yeah that was our 2018 tour shirt and that one is a uh, that one's gone <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll do a throwback one day but. all right all right i want to thank norman skinner for coming on the show coming back on the show and we didn't get cut off this time <laughs> and, ah. uh it's always great to see you man i hope to see you in person it's been a minute and thank you brent for being here uh, for myself, Brett, this has been Fun Never is Podcast. You can find us at funneverispodcast.com. Check it out. Check the video. Go check out Forbidden. They're playing in San Francisco with Death Angel. I believe it's two nights. Two nights. The, two nights. Uh, they, if, if you don't have tickets already, if both nights are completely sold out, but you can buy the live stream. So anybody can buy a live stream for either nights. Um, so, yeah. Or you can fly out and see them at a festival. Yep, yep. There's lots of those going on as well. <laughs> Go see Nevian fly up or drive up. Go see Nevian. Yeah, yeah. Come, come, come crash on someone's couch, just not mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For Brutal Brett, myself, and Norman Skinner, this has been an episode of Fun Everance Podcast. Take care. We'll catch you next time. Bye.